All right, another example. Let's try this one. Yeah, you haven't necessarily covered the broad, slightly broadened. What is what is he talking about there? What in in, in which clue does that refer to? Normally, the peaks are kind of like this or like this, but sometimes you'll see something that looks kind of like this. Well, this would be broad. So broad just means that it's not sharp. It's not pointed. Let's see, and that's going to pertain only to a singlet? Not necessarily. Okay. So it could be a singlet. It could be, um, it, this could be a whole bunch of different peaks that have merged together. We saw last time that a whole bunch of different peaks could be hard to distinguish from each other because they've merged uh, together with each other. So um, I don't know too much else that we can uh, interpret from this. I think that sometimes we took, uh, the hydroxy OH peaks are broad, okay. if I'm remembering correctly. Or maybe that's for IR. I know that IR um, alcohol peaks are, are broad, oh, IR. but I don't remember whether they're broad for proton NMR or not. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what the broad would indicate for the proton NMR. Okay. So now we're doing hand up problem number three. Yeah, you have that too. Should we talk about this together now? 
So we saw that here the degrees of unsaturation was four. It's good that you're in the habit now of calculating that first. The number of carbons is 10, so we have two times the number of carbons plus two. And now we have to subtract the number of halogens as well as the number of hydrogens. So we ended up with four. But then you worked out that there's many different possibilities here. There could be no pi bonds in four rings, or one pi bond in three rings, or two pi bonds in two rings. There's a whole bunch of different possibilities over here. One clue that should really jump out at us, however, here is the 7.23. Let's see if we can look at our table and see what absorbs in the 7.23 region. Yeah. Is there anything else in that region? Um, well, unless, unless, I mean, mm -hmm. unless it's something that's pulled to the left from... That's a good point. Uh, that's a good point. Now, there's nobody who normally absorbs in that region, although it, there could be something that was pulled to the left there because it was surrounded by a lot of electronegative elements. We have an electron. There's only one electronegative element, though, so we shouldn't expect things to be too far okay. from their normal positions. So we can certainly take a guess as to what this represents. A good guess is that it represents this. Now, we were talking earlier about what the AR stands for. That stands for aromatic. And in this course, for spectroscopy, the only aromatic compound you're likely to see is benzene. So we're going to take a guess that this is a benzene ring. Remember that you could draw benzene like this. However, for spectroscopy, maybe this isn't the best approach because there's another resonance form where all the double bonds are shifted once. So the best way to draw benzene here, or maybe it is, I don't know. Actually, I will draw it that way. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this is an okay way. So we'll draw the benzene like this. And we know this can be attached to some hydrogens. Well, those hydrogens are absorbing like this. And we know how many hydrogens there are. How many hydrogens are there on the benzene? Five. By the way, how many hydrogens could potentially be attached here? Six. How many hydrogens could be potentially attached just to this one carbon? I'm one. sorry, one. just one. We were talking about this early. There's only room for one hydrogen in each of these places, right? There's only room for one hydrogen because we've already shown three bonds. That's why maybe I should not use the circle. If I put in the circle, I can't see how many bonds there already are. But without the circle, I can see this carbon already has one, two, three bonds. There's only room for one hydrogen. But there's not going to be a hydrogen over here, because there's only five of those aromatic hydrogens. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense so far, how we got this structure? Well, this is a very useful absorption. It's very useful that nobody else absorbs normally in this region. So if we see a signal in this region, we can leap to the conclusion that we've got this benzene ring. Now, have we accounted for our degrees of unsaturation? Um, we have one more. Do we? Or we could have, uh, we could have uh, how many pi bonds have we drawn so far? Three more rings, or we could have? Well, let's take our time. How many pi bonds have we drawn in the benzene? Oh, I'm sorry, three. And how many rings have we drawn? Perfect. We got it. Oh. So we're done with our degrees of unsaturation. Oh, this is cool. yet more confirmation. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So the ring even sounds yes. towards this. The number of, so the degrees of unsaturation is the number of pi bonds plus the number of rings. Oh. That's why theoretically, beforehand, it was possible that we had zero pi bonds and four rings, or one pi bond and three rings, or two pi bonds and two rings, etc. But now we've really nailed it down. The benzene accounts for all four degrees of unsaturation, and that's more confirmation that we were on the right track with the benzene ring here. So we should not put in any more pi bonds. We should not put in any more rings, because we've already accounted for all of those. And now we've accounted for our group A hydrogens. So we're pretty much done with group A. All right. Now we have to start figuring out what's happening with our group B and our group C. It's, to the, it's probably going to be where our electronegative atom is attached. In this group B? Yeah. yeah. Here we have this 3.53. Well, that's in that 2.5 to 5 region. This seems to be a situation. Oops where the hydrogen is on the atom with the electronegative element. This is where we, where I, I've erased it, but I had our rules of thumb before. When we're between 2.5 and 5, that's when the hydrogen is attached to an atom that's attached to the electronegative element. So it seems like these hydrogens are on the same carbon as the chlorine. And how many hydrogens should I put here? 
two. We were given that from the integration. Again, in this case, the computer did us a favor and figured out the exact number of hydrogens that each peak represents. There's really no way these could be on separate carbons because there's only one chlorine. Since there's only one chlorine, they both have to be on the same carbon so they can both be adjacent to that. The other possibility here is that things could look like this. That would imply there was two chlorines, and that's not happening here. So we can rule that out. And then there must be one other bond that we haven't accounted for yet in this fragment. So this is a good example of piecing out what this fragment looks like. And now we need to try to take a guess as to what fragment C represents. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. We should do one more thing. Excuse me. How many, how many hydrogens are on this carbon? None. Because N was zero. That's interesting. 